Hello, everybody. Um, glad you could join me on such short notice. I just want to, I haven't done this in a long time. I think I look extremely red. And the reason is I don't have my good my good camera, excuse me, set up. I have uh, this Logitech camera that Randy sent me, thanks to him. Um, and I, I've been playing with the settings. Maybe I'm just really red. Maybe Texas has made me red. Um, so yeah, that, that's where we are. I wanted to just talk to you about some things, answer some questions. I haven't done this in a while. I got, I look so red. Cause I'm seeing the, the doors behind and my hand's not red. Why is my face, am I this red? Maybe I'm just this red. I don't understand. I don't understand. Look, my teeth are white. My hand is white. My face is red. I think I might actually be this red. Am I this red? Am I? My arm's not red. Is this a farmer tan? Oh God, have I become what I've most hated? Um, I just wanted to talk to you about, uh, first I wanted to thank Sheath Underwear for sponsoring this live stream. For those of you who don't know, if you go to sheathunderwear.com and use promo code MALICE20, you get 20% off. Now here we have a pair. This has the flag of Texas on it with the C to remember the Alamo. And the thing about Sheath that is amazing is they've got this dual pouch technology for both parts of your male anatomy to keep you snug and secure. So sheathunderwear.com, promo code MALICE20. And the underwear that I designed are going to um, be available at the website very shortly. So I'm excited about that. Um, it's been a uh, uh, rough day today my mom's mom passed away my grandma i didn't really know her um so i've been helping my mom deal with it uh it's, it's been very hard on her of course you know losing your mom uh, and just hearing you know she was just telling me some stories about how her mom grew up being raised by my would have been great grandma and this was a stepmother and just the sorts of things people feel comfortable um saying and doing to children is something I, it's very hard for me to uh, wrap my head around. Maybe it's a function of, of, of being an American in that we kind of venerate kids and maybe in other countries, you know, kids tend to die young, so you don't treat them as well. I don't know, I'm, I could be talking completely out of my ass, but when you hear these kind of like, like my mom was just saying that her grandma was told as a kid, like, I hope you die, like was given like rotten food, like shit like that. And you can even maybe use the context, this is Russia and there wasn't food to go around, but like you hear these stories, there was this case, um, you could look it up, this was in America, there were these foster parents who adopted these two kids and they wouldn't let them eat and they grew up all malnourished and the kids were like trying to eat drywall, they were so hungry and they were all like mentally damaged for life, but they fed their own kids. Like I don't like understand that like i could wrap my head around killing someone sexual assault you could we could kind of get there but like a kid and not giving them food I, I don't i don't get it i don't get it um i, I it even makes less sense to me than like pedophilia which is even still completely un, un, unimaginable but like i i don't understand i don't understand and that makes it just so uh chilling when it's kind of close to home so um it, it's it's it was it was tough it's tough it's tough. Um, what are your thoughts on agorism? What do you think counter-economics is a viable method of taking down the state? I, 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 to a point, but I do think the better mechanism of taking down the state would be, um, um, things like crypto when they don't have control of the currency. And, and I, I know whenever you mention crypto, everyone spurs out. I get it. I get it. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying if people weren't tied to the dollar um, and credit card companies and the banks, that I think would be a much more effective way to take down the state. And also the state just functions on legitimacy, right? So if people just don't regard it as legitimate, a great example right now is marijuana laws. Marijuana laws are federally a crime. No one cares in these states where it's legalized. It's just they pretend it's not a crime and the state, the federal state doesn't have the will to do anything about it. So like that's kind of a 
a mechanism of um, um, doing that. I have to go get a candle. I, I promised my mom I'd light a candle for her mom, which I'm going to do. Um, so yeah, let me talk a little bit more about what's coming up ahead. Let me just answer a couple of questions here. Finding glitter in the new place. No, but I found two different species of cricket, which is still a lot better than um, America, the New York sized roaches. Um, that's the Colombian flag. You are welcome. Um, I've gained a new respect for Nicki Minaj. She is tearing the blue chicks a new back door. Yeah, I, I, I would strongly encourage everyone to read Thaddeus Russell's book, A Renegade History of the United States. And he talks about how marginalized people are the ones who fight for our freedoms. How can you say Nicki Minaj is marginalized? You know, she's a multimillionaire. She's still like pretty trashy, right? She's not someone from high society. So she's not going to be raised in this kind of context with uh, where you're treated a certain way, you act a certain way. So that gives her the space to basically act out and give these people the finger that they so desperately deserve. Who is your favorite historical Christian personality? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know that uh, I don't know that I have a good answer. Um, I'm certainly not an anti-Christian. Um, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. Um, who, that's a great question. Um, who do I admire within? I mean, a, an easy answer is Pope John Paul um, for what he did with Poland and, and taking on the Soviet Union. Um, that's a very easy one, although I'm not giving him much credit in the white pill for it. Um, I'll have to think about this. Um, there's a lot of villains there, but I'm sure every Christian would agree with that, that there's a lot of villains to be had in, in the Christian uh, leadership and, and, and um, history. That's not even in dispute. How swarming. Well, thank you very, very much. It's very kind of you, Amanda. Um, my mom's here, but I wanted to say hi before I abandon you to hang the literal boom. Yeah, give your mom a hug. You know, Cherish her while you have the chance. Um, willing to talk about your experience on You Are Here. Sure. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to say. Um, I had a great time with Elijah and Sydney. It's really fun for me to red pill conservatives who I think are shockingly receptive to it these days, far more than in the past. Conservatives historically, I'd say, you know, for the last, for my lifetime, have been just reacting to progressivism and just whatever the progressives want, they just say no. And it, it, and, and it leads to all sorts of missed opportunities, one of which the aforementioned championing of Nicki, Nicki Minaj, it's like you would think, okay, she's black, she's, uh, I don't know what, what her background is, I think she's from Trinidad or whatever, but she's trashy, therefore she's a Democrat. It, 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 and as if Democrats aren't gonna attack other Democrats either. It's very facile thinking, facile thinking, how it's pronounced in English. Um, and it, it just leads to like possible temporary ways to move the agenda forward and leaving money on the table. So that that's, uh, so I, um, it was also really interesting because I went to, to um, Dallas to film it live. And in the, in the hallway, there are these ruby slippers behind glass and like, and I'm like, why is some kind of gay thing? Like why are there like a, a fake ruby slippers from the Wizard of Oz? And those are the real ones. Glenn Beck has them and they're on display. So that was really, really cool to see. I'm, I, by the way, I'm a huge Oz fan do not like the movie. The books are infinitely better. Um, and I'll fight Glenn Beck about it. Um, do you make notes or highlight books when you read? Yes. What I do is I usually read on my iPod. And what I do is if I see something cool, I do a screen cap. And then I have a file with um, or folder with all the pages that I've screen capped. If I'm reading a hard copy in the back, I'll just write the page number. Uh, and I think that's a good idea. Uh, to kind of, because a lot of times there'll be like a great like, little turn of phrase, you know, like a little quote, that would be great. So that's something that I um, enjoy doing. Um, I have been so much happier as a result. Oh, good. That is great. That That's what it's all about for me, honestly. Um, it's, it's very wonderful to hear. Um, with the Pentagon finally admitting to the droning of the interpreter being a mistake, I hate that word here. I mistakenly killed you. That's manslaughter at best. Do you see any actual consequences of the security state? Um, not in the near term, not at all. Um, thank you, Luis. Um, is Michael Malice considered elite enough to be liquidated during the next revolution? I guess we'll find out, right? <laughs> uh, 
Um, welcome to Texas. That, this is so kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, it brings me, oh, okay. Good for you. Good for you. That's the other thing. Guys, I'm 45. I'm going to learn how to drive. It's never too late to be a better person. And just because you've been drinking or, you know, smoking every day, and if, if you like that, more power to you, doesn't mean that you can't try it for a little bit or like, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm done. That's crazy. That's so crazy. Um, good for you. Oh, okay. Let's talk about, oh God, I have to talk to somebody named Pedro who pays me shithole money. This, this is not what I'm about. So great news, everybody. Amazon has quietly rolled out without telling anyone, or at least didn't come across my desk, um, that they are now having a hardcover uh, printing process as well. So I submitted the, I redid the cover. Uh, sorry, my, my uh, John redid the cover, who did the cover art. Um, I ordered galleys or proof copies for myself. Once those are in my hands, which in a week, I will hit publish and you'll be able to get hardcovers. I'm also doing a signed limited edition fancy deluxe hardcover because I'm a book freak, as you guys know. Uh, limited 2,500. There's gonna, those are only gonna be at malice.locals.com, one each. I think they're gonna be a hundred bucks probably, but Ego and Hubris goes for 400. So this is gonna be, a, a, this is for the collectors, which I certainly am one myself. Um, thanks for the great talk. Any plans to appear with Yaron on a podcast? Yaron is going, to, oh, okay. So I'm also leaving Gas Digital. I'm going to podcast one starting in October. I have two guests left on Gas. It's going to be Yaron, which we've already recorded, and Dave Smith, which is supposed to be next week. I have not been able to get a hold of Dave Smith. I don't know if this is inappropriate to put it publicly. He hasn't tweeted in four days. He's really he's dropped an episode. I don't know when he filmed it. So I'm a little concerned about him. I'm sure everything's fine. Um, worst case scenario, I release Yaron next week and Dave after, but I, I don't know where I can't get a hold of him. Uh, and I'm, I'm positive it's not personal. Do you think the increasing malfeasance of the elite will speed up calls for liberty? I do not think the elite has gotten increasingly in its malfeasance. I think what's gotten increased is their incompetence at covering their malfeasance and part it's on their part and part it's thanks to social media and more and more people marginally every day are realizing, oh, these are really like evil, evil people. It's not like, oh, I disagree or whatever. They, they have ideas about public school. Like, oh no, they don't value human life like at all, like not even a little bit. And, and when you really, you know, it's the kind of thing with sociopaths and I'm not saying they're all sociopaths. I think many of them are just very self-motivated um, is that it's hard to wrap your head around it because it's so foreign to your thinking. We tend, when you meet someone, you assume they're somewhat wired like you, maybe they're weird, maybe they're crazy, but there's certainly like, you know, range. And then you're like, oh, this person is completely, might as well be an alien. And that is hard to stomach, especially since our entire lives have been trained to view them as the opposite. Okay, wanna thank you for what you do. Fume, okay. Fume is one of the sponsors I'm trying to bring over with the show. Because as I mentioned earlier, I had a friend who wrote for Health Facts and Fears, and it would be debunking all these, oh, you should eat eggs, you shouldn't eat eggs, all this nonsense. And he said, no, 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 smoking really is like the worst thing you can do. This, that's not a propaganda. This isn't some liberal thing. Or It's like really, really bad for you and really expensive. So the problem, this is where it gets difficult. There are things that, cold turkey is tough for some people. Some people can do it. Fine. If you can do it, we're proud of you. But it's easier to do things incrementally. Like this is why they go to methadone. It's like heroin is tough. You can't quit it. But methadone, you could get weaned off of it. So fume, what I like about fume is one of the issues, and I've never been a smoker, but the smokers have that ritual. What do you do with your hands? And fume lets you have something to play with to, so that psychological aspect is better. So I really do think it's a great product. Thank you for helping Maxime. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the other thing. I'm so dumb. I still think like a New Yorker and I'm like, oh, this place is 10 blocks away. I'll walk it. And it's no, you can't do it here. It's like you're, you're drenched and, and you're like, what was I thinking? I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll learn to drive pretty soon. Um, do you think left or right or centrist combo is obsolete? No. Hence my book, mm -hmm. The New Right. Mm -hmm. Who's texting me? Oh, it's my mom. Uh, 
that would so that she said this is a I'll read this out because I'm sure she wouldn't mind. So she wanted to know this my great grandma lived in oh this always happens with this with this camera. My great grandma lived in Israel. And my mom said, well, does she think it would be a good idea to send like a few hundred dollars to the nursing home to buy everyone some food in her memory? And I think that's a great idea. That's just really kind. Yeah, so that, that's very nice of her. Mm -hmm. Ugh, now okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, how do, this camera is always annoying. Hold on, I got to do this. Um, this. I forgot about this with this camera. Bear with me, guys. I'm not a boomer. Not totally. Um, you got to go here and then you got to do this. There we go. I'd have to keep that open. Um, sorry about that. Um, let me catch up with the, the uh, uh, oh God, there's so much of you. Um, it's, you don't, oh, oh, my denim. Yeah, my, my denim collection's gone. They, the movers stole it or lost it. Um, the problem with the denim is even if I got it new, the fades are what make the denim great. But you know what, as far as things go, Worst things have happened. Uh, I this is. I think I'm not going to get an aquarium now because I remember the thing with aquariums is every day you wake up and you see if they're all still alive and you have this lingering fear of death. And losing my denim was a lot like when my aquarium got wiped out, which was in Harvey Picard's book, A Movie Year, uh, in the blackout. It just kind of sucks. And like, why do I want to start over? So I'll get a few pairs, but I think I, I've made my peace with that kind of chapter. I have not gotten my guns yet, but I promise you I will. Um, aren't you afraid that your commentary won't match the five eyes preferred narrative? I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, what are your thoughts on the arbiter and being the arbiter of unblocking on Twitter? P.S. Oh, yeah. I don't know. What do you, I don't know how I'm the arbiter of anything on Twitter. I just do what I think works for me. Um, thank you, Adam, for that shithole money. Um, would you consider getting Peter Robinson to interview you on your new book? I don't know how what that means. Like, how would I get him to interview me? Um, sure, when it comes out. Um, thank you, Scotsman. What was your favorite Norm Macdonald joke? Um, my God, there's so many. I was such a fan of his. I think the stuff, this isn't maybe my favorite, but something I really like, where he has this whole bit about like, yeah, this guy, Hitler. You know, he, he seems really persuasive and just you look in his eyes and he, he's like, I started reading Wikipedia. I'm like, this is okay. Well, this guy's like, oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, God, no. Oh, oh, this is horrible. So that was really, really funny. He's uh, one of a kind for sure. I hope you find happiness in your new home. Thank you. That's very, I'm going to break 200 pages on the white pill today. It's going to be 300. So we're bringing the baby home. I got to tell you, uh, I've said this before, it's, really by far, no, not by far, the Dear Reader was very hard. It is very, very, very hard to write this because when you read about children being tortured for no reason and it's your job, and I got this from like my, my co-authoring background, right? You talk to someone, you kind of have to put yourself in their shoes, then you have to translate it in such a way that it's readable and enjoyable and light, but you're still getting the ideas across so when you're putting yourself in the shoes of like children being tortured um, and knowing that they're helpless and that no one is going to come help them or even adults, you know, it's, 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 it gets to you because then the next story are these stories of amazing heroism. So then you get pulled, it's like being, it's like making myself bipolar. So then you get the heights of beauty. If you look at my Twitter from last night, there was this story of this guy, Heinz, who fell in love with a girl in East Berlin and he figured out where the steel beam is in Checkpoint Charlie for the cars. And he got a car just short enough. And he just drove under it with the girl seated behind the driver's seat and the mother-in-law in the trunk and just floored it to freedom. And you could just imagine the East German guards being like, Ugh. but it's just it, like, he just did this because he loved this woman. It's just so like the stories of like the beauty of the human spirit. And then like, just how evil evil is, which Americans are completely naive to, which even I, having written the North Korean book, was still largely naive to. And also the fact that so many of the intelligentsia in this country either sat on their hands or waved it away. That is really hard to um, wrap my head around, especially given that uh, this is where I came from. Um, so yeah. 
You have to be a resident of Texas to buy a gun in Texas. Oh, okay. Thank you. Congrats on the move. Any advice for Canadians whose travel options are limited? Make plans to get out of there as fast as you can. If we want to wake people up, Shalom, my sister. Hello. That's where my great grandma was. She's in Israel. Um, uh, if we want to wake people up, what should be our go-to method? Uh, you don't want to wake people up. You want to wake individuals up. Most people don't want to be woken up. So I don't know. I, I would just, honestly, I would spread like the right, if, if they like books, recommend some books. If like podcasts, recommend some podcasts. Play your cards close to your chests chest because there's a cost benefit analysis here where if you play the wrong card, it could be very expensive. What part of Austin are you in? Are you serious? Uh, what would you stance on the back of your gown next time you go to the Met dinner? Oh, that's a good one. All cops are criminals. That might be one. Would be curious to hear your impressions on driving, learning to drive as an adult new driver. I, w I will absolutely be talking about that and possibly filming it because it's going to be absolutely hilarious. When I re read a book to make my own, I highlight my book as a ritual. I just answered that earlier, but no, I do something very similar. Yeah. One more agorism question. So will uh, Stephen Conklin's argument, Conklin's arguments on stronger black markets, authoritarian governments, and their collapse make an appearance on the white, in the white pill? It will, they will not. Rather have a convo with Rudolf Rocker or Kropotkin. I don't know who Rudolf Rocker is, so I have to say Kropotkin. You must have Mark Pasio on. Must is a big word to use with an anarchist. Um, thank you, Amy. I like that picture. Um, if the vax become ill, it is likely a big through our, our variant. So surely there are greater dangers to others and should face the tough sanctions. Sir, I, I would encourage you to read the new right if you are trying to ascribe logic to power games, you are just going to be frustrated every time. It has never had anything to do with logic. It's all about power and control. They're not trained to think logically, so they're not going to be trained. Here's the other thing. Let me give you an example. If you talk to a blue pill, pill person, Matthew, and you made a very reasonable fair point, they would reject it. But if they saw Don Lemon say it, they would repeat it verbatim the next day. That's how it works. They've outsourced their uh, uh, critical thinking capacity. So you're not going to get anywhere and you're just going to end up getting frustrated. My seven-year-old dad, oh my gosh, wow. My, see, I told you it's not too late. Identifies as an anarchist and no longer libertarian after your last small book combo and reading your anarchist handbook. He said he'd never quite able to associate anarchy with peacefulness before. That's exactly what it is. Anarchism means peace. And, and also some kindness, which we could all use a little bit more of, I think. Thank you for introduction to Curtis Jarvin. He reminds me of what you said about Rand. He asked all the right questions, but does not have all the right answers. Yes. And, and that's the, the biggest compliment you could pay someone. Like he makes me think. Um, Zdrastvi from Bulgaria. Which Hitchens do you prefer and why Peter or Christopher? I'm not familiar with Peter at all. So it'd have to be Christopher Hitchens. Um, oh man, I don't know what to do. There's so many of you. Um, where, uh, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna miss some. Oh God, I'm missing 50. To, oh, okay, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, okay. You're such a positive influence. It's like you give people a common smirk. They're so much better. Yes, yes. I, this is something I pride myself on. I really do. Uh, and it, thank you. It, this really means a lot that when you're trying to do something it actually happens. You know what I mean? It's really great. Um, so the, my past episodes were censored because not censored gases policies. You have the last 15 episodes available. Otherwise you have to go to gas digital, but I'll unlock them all once I leave gas. So what's not YouTube. If you had to live in any country besides the U S which would you choose? Oh, well, I would have said Canada until five minutes ago. Um, I don't know. Th this is also the really funny thing. That's insane is that the anti-Semites are like, well, you could just move to Israel. I don't speak Hebrew and I don't want to be around Israelis. Like I, I organically, the next closest thing to America would be a place where they speak English. I would probably live in Sweden before I lived in Israel possibly because they speak perfect English there. It's very odd. Um, welcome to Texas. You've given me hope. Thank you so much. 
What's your theory of how info spreads? It's in the new right, but basically it starts at the margins. Then you have the cool edgy people adopt it. Uh, then it becomes um, kind of hip. Then the corporations consume it and excrete it in a manner that the masses can understand and thereby ruin it. So that is basically the process. And when you're in the middle, insanity and genius look identical, the equidistant from you, and you don't have the capacity to distinction both. That's why many people say, oh, that's weird, because novelty is something that's foreign and thereby bad to them. And those are the people I try to alienate at any cost. Do you have any advice for red pill college students who are tired of the indoctrination and feel isolated? Yes. This is, I, I don't know how to say this nicely. I'm not trying to be mean. Like, suck it up. Like, it's going to suck. It's not going to be easy. You are so much better off than I was in college because you have the internet. You can meet, meet like minded people. You could hear like minded thinkers. You could reach them on social media. Just bite your tongue. You're in prison. You're at the mercy of evil people who would love to hurt you, meaning the, the uh, intellectuals um, or your fellow classmates. Try to make connections and do a lot of reading. This is your chance and start exercising, get in good shape because then it'll be a great foundation for when you're older. I happen to be in town for work. What's your favorite place to go in Austin? I would say I don't really have one yet. Uh, I haven't made this my kind of, I haven't done, I don't have a good idea. Pokeworks, I eat there every day for lunch. Welcome to Austin. Well, thank you, Aaron. Um, glad to see you settled. Have fun making the house your home. Yeah, it's it's been tough. It's been tough. It's traumatic moving. Um, have you read Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning? I have not, but I'm familiar with the, the theme of that uh, essay, of course. Do you take notes on what you're reading? This is so interesting. I, this is the third time you guys asked me this question, but yeah, like I take screen caps. Um, glad to hear you're safe, praying to hear your wisdom with much, please never let them silence your voice. I, because of you guys, I don't have to worry about biting my tongue because if, if the podcast went down, I have my locals, if the Twitter went down, you know, I've, I have my books, I've got different ways to get my voice out there. And it's only be, literally because of the audience, like it's, you know, people like, oh, if it wasn't for you, no, literally, I don't have a, I don't have a voice, I don't have a boss. If it wasn't for the audience, I would not have anything. So I'm very cognizant of that, but we're not friends, okay? Um, let me update you on Five Eyes of the English-Speaking Intel Cooperative that controls the MSN. They spy on each other's citizens of professional courtesy. Oh, Jesus, just, it gets worse and worse. Let me give you updates on um, the audiobook. So the audiobook for the Anarchist Handbook is done. It is being mastered right now. Uh, John says he hopes to have it done next week. Um, I will probably launch it on Timcast. I don't know when, of course. I'll have to give them a heads up. Um, but that is happening any minute now, and it's really going to be great. Uh, I'm so proud of the cast I was able to put together for it. Uh, you know, 20 different voices for 20 different characters. So, yeah. Um, it seems like Florida and Texas are partners in pushing back in this administration. Oh, let me tell you about the shirts I'm going to launch. So when I move to podcast one, I'm going to have um, some t-shirts. One is going to say, keep autism weird. And it's going to have the map of Texas with a blue puzzle piece where Austin is. Then I'm going to have mm -hmm. one that says normalize Austin. And finally, this is my favorite one to trigger conservatives. It's going to say, let's turn the red states blue and have an arrow from California to Texas and from New York to Florida. Um, so that's really going to bother a lot of people, which I hate doing. It's the worst. Why would anyone do that? Louis J. Gomez lo reading Louis Ling. No, Louis was going to do Tolstoy and he dropped out. So I read Louis Ling um, and Tolstoy is going to be read by, um, who read Tolstoy? I'm completely blanking on who read uh, um, uh, um, Tolstoy instead. Oh, I think it was Buck Sexton. That's right. I bought an iPad Pro, completely changed the way I read, helps the eyes. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It, okay, so that Yuri Bezimov, I haven't seen the video, but from everything I've seen, it reads to me a little bit like astrology in that it's the kind of thing where everything makes sense after the fact, but it's not actually predictive. Um, oh gosh, there's 2000 of you here. Okay. Let me, let me catch up. You're well, oh dude, my condolences on what's happening to your country. Seriously. It's just horrific. 
just absolutely horrific. Um, okay, let me. Hola from Austin. I moved here when I moved here 22 years ago. I saw bumper stickers that said "Save the Fire Ant," and I knew I effed up. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, Brent, thank you for fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, don't don't be passive aggressive. I get what you're saying. Don't be passive aggressive. Um, uh, he's referring to Tim. Um, I I I will defend Tim even if I don't agree with him per se on this issue because I think Tim sees the issue. He sees a lot of his fellows in this fight see the issue, and he's frustrated that more people aren't doing more. So I will, you know, defend his vigor if I don't necessarily agree with his position on this issue. As I've disagreed with him when I was in a show last, we're talking about the couple from Missouri who were shooting the guns outward. Um, you're in it. Oh, this is this is actually great, and I love that fascinator you have in your picture. You're in an airplane. There's a left and right wing. You're inside coach. A small few are in first class, but who's flying? Who owns the airline? Not you. Yeah, it's kind of like the George Carlin one, but that's really great. Um, I, I like that. That's right. You're not from Texas, but Texas wants you anyway. Well, I am from Texas now. Do you believe people are basically good? No, people are basically animals. You were recently recommended to me by a friend who also supports the session, and I've become a fan. Thank you for keeping it Villarreal. Probably Villarreal, but whatever. This is America. Excuse me, this is Texas. I'm not in America anymore. What are your thoughts on John Stuart Mill? Oh, I don't like him at all. Uh, that, uh, yeah, like he was good for his time, but he seems very wishy-washy to me. There's none of that fire. Congrats on your move. I'm excited to see you live at Tom Woods 2000. Oh, you guys have no idea. You guys have no idea what's coming. It's going to be so good. It's, I'm going to nuke him from space. Um, did the parties ever really swap platforms? No, but the voting blocks did switch. Like con socially conservative Democrats in the South became socially conservative Republicans. That's true. Um, but it's... It, it's the, the thing is like the um, anti civil rights people like um, who was who was the one segregation forever what was his name um, the one who ran in sixty eight I'm forgetting his name I can't believe blanking his name it's not like he became a Republican like that just became a non issue in politics that was there was that wasn't a thing anymore uh, and, and no matter how much the New York Times would like to portray um, otherwise and Bob Dole in seventy six in the vice presidential debate was right that the wars of the 20th century were Democrat wars. In honor of Norm, every day I try to expand my vocabulary by using new words to give my arguments more of a similitude. Today's word is expand. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's good. Um, how does the media collectively push identical talking points within the same hour? It's not coincidental. L look at it this way. McDonald's, right? Um, if I get six piece nuggets in McDonald's in Austin or McDonald's in a shithole country, they're going to be the same. So if you, but the terminology, yeah, sometimes they use the same word, like, um, uh, when they have a meme and they'll talk about like manipulated video, whatever term they use, that is when it gets creepy and weird, but they're obviously all on the same team. Oh, are you from Norway? Travel only if vaccine passport here in Norway. So here's some travel money. I, uh, uh, Erna is not doing a good job. Norway I love because their um, prime minister looks like Santa Claus's wife. You can look her up. And she speaks superb English. She speaks better English than like Bush and Trump. Like if you watch her talk, she's very articulate and, and she looks so jolly, just very well spoken. Oh, I did not hear that about Brett Easton Ellis. Ooh, that sounds interesting. I, I would love to meet him at some point. Greetings from Germany. When will you make another video with the almighty Alex Jones? Uh, I don't know. That's probably in the near future now that we're both uh, countrymen. Hey, Michael, glad to see you're doing well. What are your thoughts on impeachment drama and FX? Not watching that garbage. Um, it, this is how they blue pill people. They'll take history. Look at the, 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 the crown and the caricature they made of Thatcher. It was much better than I expected, but it was still... Comple there were things in that were like completely implausible. Like at one point, Thatcher is with the queen and tells the queen, I wouldn't work with women. They're too emotional. This is a politician. Thatcher was a snake in many ways. She would talk out. No politician is going to say such fucked up things, especially in private to another woman, let alone the queen. It was so weird. 
Um, Idaho is the last free state. Texas wishes they were free like us. Cool. We're not a state. We're our own country. We're just under occupation. What are your thoughts on post-humanism and its association with the current political and social situation? I am a big fan. If you mean about like using technology to change your body and all this other stuff, I am actually going to start a program uh, later next month, which I can't talk about, which is part of this. And it's going to be either amazing or make me into Stephen Hawking. Getting the vaccine has become the secular version of receiving the Eucharist. Uh, I don't know that that's actually true um, at all, but I, there are some parallels there for sure. New game just came out called Lost in Random. Oh, thank you. I'm going to write that down. I do love good playthroughs. Oh, this looks this looks exactly like my alley. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Joey. When does the story your grandmother is saying she regrets not getting <laughs> See, that's funny. I do, I do like dark humor. That is very appropriate. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. I'm going to I'm going to text my mom that she should have just All right. Um oof. Okay. You once called Ezra Klein a neo-Stalinist. He seems more Maoist. Well, I think Mao is a neo-Stalinist. I, I mean, I, I think we're in agreement. I, I meant Stalinist in the sense that I don't think Mao is as big on propaganda in the Stalinist sense and telling a narrative as uh, I think that was much more a function of Stalin than of Mao. In terms of uh, obviously Mao did it and, and so on and so forth, but I think it was much more of a Stalinist thing because Stalin had much more interactions with the West as well. Favorite Neil Hamburger line. Oh, that's easy. Um, can I get more laughter in the monitor? He, when he goes, what question did Larry King ask most frequently during all his years of broadcast journalism? Should I be concerned about blood in my diarrhea? How do you handle family vac shaming you? I don't have that. Uh, how would you? I'm oh, sorry. How would you? I'm sorry. Now, how did you? Um, this is a broader question. In my opinion, everyone should become or work on being better at uh, establishing boundaries. And a very simple line. I learned this because I, I had a relationship and it was kind of uh, um, contentious. And I, I forgot where I got this line, but it really is a great, great line. I'm getting blurry again uh, to use with certain types of people. And it's going to sound sissy, but I'm telling you it works or at least try it. I have a right to my feelings and just keep repeating that. And that person is really not in a position to argue with that point. And it's, it, they're going to, they can be sarcastic, but they'll give up. So keep that one in the holster. It might be, you'll be surprised how uh, effective it is. Did you ever ride a bike as a kid? I've not. I don't know how to ride a bike either. So I'm a, I'm a mess, a mess. Hellraiser is the greatest movie of all time. I'm going to be inspired by Hellraiser. You'll see in the, in the not so distant future and uh, it, it, you'll all like it a lot. Alberta doing round four restrictions. Friends think it's necessary because I see you at 100% capacity. What's your response to that rationale? I wouldn't bother responding. There's no talking to them. Thanks for the shout out on Timcast, bro. You've never, where's my, I better get a video either of me and Alex or when I'm on Tim again or something, something, anything. What am I, chopped liver? That's an expression, kids. What's your favorite Zelda game? Gotta be the first. Gotta be the first, easy. Um, seeing your influence grows is my daily white pill. I, it's, it's very flattering and, and it's, 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 it's really great because my politics at the base are like, people shouldn't be killed. People shouldn't be made to feel helpless for no reason. People should be free to live their lives and their values. And I don't think those are particularly controversial stances. And 
but but there's a lot of people who disagree with that stuff. And the fact that increasing the people are like, wait a minute, this isn't complicated. This is really simple. It's bad to it's bad to kill people overseas, no matter what rationale you have. I don't even know if ISIS K is even a thing at this point. I mean, I looked them up their Wikipedia page, but like, where can I find your interview with the National Socialist? Uh, if you mean Chris Cantwell, it's in the New Right. If you mean Dave Smith, it's on your welcome and part of the problem alternating every other week. What hobbies do you partake in besides trolling? Uh, used to be aquariums. I've got 50 succulents here, collecting books, the gym. Um, I think that's kind of a reading. Thank you, Frank, for your continued support. You're very kind. Thank you. Made a video today of a poll asking if Biden had the power to mandate the jab, then no option didn't work. Welcome to 1984, everyone. Yeah, it's not 1984. There's lots of books where, you know, the mass man has always been like this. You're the best. This is true. This is true. Okay. Okay, let me catch oh, Jesus. Let me catch up with you guys. For your haircut. Oh, I need a haircut. I have to find a place. I went to Beard Brand and they were all full and now I got to find a different place. Um, my kids are, whenever we drive play that, make sure you're playing. Oh, that's really sweet. I hope none of my jokes are too inappropriate for the eighth grader. I'm sure they are. That's very, I, I love the idea that you guys are listening together. That's really nice. That I really like that a lot. Um, hello from the happy, Denmark, you guys are the tallest people on earth, but you're getting smaller. I just read an article yesterday. London, Landon, excuse me, 15 days to slow the spread and flatten the curve to 15 months, show us your papers. Yeah, you all needed to look into Q. Go, thank you for demonetizing this broadcast. <laughs> uh, I just got out of, oh. I am, I'm glad you got out. Uh, leaving New York to me felt like that. I'm like, why was I putting up with this? Although to be fair, it was great until the last uh, couple of years. And, uh, and good for you to be like, I'd rather be alone than miserable than with someone and even more miserable, right? Like people don't think of trade-offs. They're like, oh, the alternative is bad. Therefore, this is good. The alternative could be bad, but this could be worse. Have you been to 24 Diner or Laundrette yet? I have not. Those sound like fun. Laundrette sounds exactly at my alley. Honestly, the big swipe pill you could find, yeah. Twitter is really good. People are on to corporate journalist bullshit like and normies it's it's not just like the radical people anymore they're like on their face they're like this is complete blatant propaganda it's really wonderful Ooh, would you ever do a tim cast with tim steve badden i was supposed to but i was moving so yeah that's absolutely gonna be a yes it's not even a question and I, i'll tell you something else Shh, don't tell anyone i would just call him sloppy steve the entire time i agree with sloppy steve uh, sloppy Steve is right. Malice, the first Urban Assembly is happening in, in Austin in September. Would you be interested in attending? That sounds, I'm a very big introvert and that sounds like a, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. This sounds like, like a nightmare to me. Um, what do you foresee regarding the current legal proceedings involving Prince Andrew? I don't know. I think this is uncharted territory, to be honest. The crown obviously protects its own but there's some things that are so beyond the pale. So I'm, 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 I'm very curious. I don't know. The Oz book didn't match the book. Yeah, no, but I just think that the sense of wonder in the Oz books, the whole series is very different and broader than the movie uh, portrayed, which it couldn't portray given technology at the time. In your honest opinion, who do you think has a bigger unit, Alex Jones or Joe Rogan? Alex is a bigger dude. He probably has like a hundred pounds on Joe. So, but that's not always correlated. You know what? I think it's Alex because I've noticed his big hands, but that's not always a correlation either. I have very, very small hands, and this was a big concern for me growing up until the internet came out and I could do measurement, and then I found out I was at the 10th percentile. Thank you for teaching me jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch had it coming. She shouldn't, she shouldn't, shouldn't have been flapping her gums. Um. When my mom asked me how bad I would feel if someone got sick, I asked how bad she might feel. She guilted me. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Ask her about peer pressure. You know, I would, do you want me to do, do you want me to smoke weed? Because all my friends are smoking weed. 
Scale of one to 10, what is your opinion of the movie Barry Lydon? I haven't seen it. Um, what is your opinion of Kubrick as director, also intellectual? Uh, I think he is, uh, I, I don't understand the fascination with him. I think his movies are unique. I'm not a movie buff at all. I don't know why he's so venerated, but I'm sure it could be explained to me. Uh, so this is me talking out of ignorance and not out of an informed opinion. Do you have a dedicated time date for your live streams? I don't. I just had some time before the gym and I was having a rough day and I thought this could help some people. So I thought I would do it before I headed out. Um, you are my friend and I am yours. Cool story, bro. N no wood is a friend of mine. Thank you, Peter. Seeing you succeeded. Good. I am so glad. Like, this is what Dave Smith said, who's probably dead now, just like grandma. Um, when he said the success of the Anarchist Handbook is like the biggest white pill of the year, it's hard for me to uh, disagree because none of us saw it coming. Remember, I was on Jordan Peterson like that week. I didn't even bring it up because I thought this was going to be like a non-book. And now it's going to be the book for a long time and it's red pilling normies. And the message is you don't have a right to hurt me just because you're the government. That's the basic message among others. When are we going to get a you're welcome with Nicki Minaj? Oh, maybe I went on my podcast one. Come visit Revolution Spirits. Is that your place? Um, that sounds like fun. Like absol uh, absolutely, I do like barbecue. Sweden watching Freedom Land go Iron Fist. <laughs> Thank you for your kroner. Um, do you own a dog house? I don't have a dog house or a dog. And now I don't think I'm gonna get one. My 37 nephew lived in Texas for two years during high school. When he moved, someone called him Tex. He has gone by that name ever since. Just the suggestion. I think I'm a little too old to be called Tex. Um, there's got a not, there's a lot of nicknames people have for me already on the internet uh, that are much more um, uh, not as complimentary, let's say, as as the name Tex. Either you get a better camera, you've been in the sun. No, this is a worse camera. Like I have a really fancy camera and uh, Greg's gonna help me set it up tomorrow. Um, yeah. But I'm glad that this is, is, is good enough for you guys, this camera, this backup camera. I recently bought, and I don't know what those words are. I don't know what those words are, I'm sorry. I'm still a New Yorker at heart in some ways. Would you rather move back to New York City or suck baby diarrhea through a straw? Uh, I would do the diarrhea because that would be 30 seconds. It would be gross. I'd rinse my mouth, I'd spit up, maybe I'd throw up. But as opposed to like years of my life being completely miserable, I'd rather be miserable like for a minute than in a state of misery for years. That's the, yeah, that's not even hard. I would like to move to Virginia freaks me out. Yeah, come, come to our country of Texas. We're, we've got a lot of cool people here. Oh yeah, Ripito. Well, my, my buddy, Michael Wolf was one of Ripito's people. So I talked with him regularly. Are you and Lex Friedman doing Halloween costumes together? No, but I think I will be on TimCast for Halloween and I've got a look to put together that you guys are going to lose your minds over. Um, absolutely lose your minds over. And I'm not telling them what it is either. I'm bringing a makeup artist with me. COVID picks, pricks seem to be the worst of pricks. It gets much worse. It gets much worse, trust me, it gets much worse. Uh, you'll read about in the White Pill how evil people are capable of being much, much worse. I have not read Anna Karenina. I don't like old books. They, they, the pacing drives me crazy. Dave Smith's wife probably gave birth. That's all. Oh, well, that would be a month early. And, but I hope they're okay. I, I think about him all the time. I wish him obviously joy and happiness. What did you think of Tucker Carl, uh, Curtis Yarvin and Tucker? I didn't watch it. Uh, I think it means exactly what you probably think it means that Tucker and some smart people on who, those who are on the right side of the spectrum realize that it makes no sense for them to marginalize people who are in some ways their allies when the left never does this. The woman who ran the uh, um, uh, pussycat march, she like tortured and killed people and they don't care. Like they will, there's never accountability. So it's like, why are we sacrificing our own? Uh, and I don't think everyone on the right is someone who's good or whatever, but like it makes sense for a Tucker to platform someone like Curtis because they are far worse. He's gonna get called a Nazi anyway. That, that's the thing. So I, I, I was surprised that happened and, and I'm uh, very pleased. I'm, obviously Curtis and I are good friends. What do you think the consequences of thousands of immigrants flooding into the country will be? 
I don't think they're as in intense as conservatives fear. And I made this point on um, Jesse Lee Peterson. I said, I would rather have a thousand Mexicans than a thousand Harvard graduates. And it's not even close uh, in terms of their values, what they are as like as people, blah, blah. I'll even take you, immigrants bring crime, fine. I'll even take those crimes as opposed to the absolute obscenities that the progressive elite want to impose on all of us. Wanted to become a... <laughs> this is great. Wanted to become a detective since I was little. Running into your work has me rethinking my life. Why did you do this to me respectfully? Go, <laughs> go fuck yourself. You could be a private eye. You could be a private eye. Come on. We need those. I don't know how much that pays if that's still a thing. Um, if you want to be a detective, turn in your fellow cops. Finally, I'm a libertarian friend got red pilled on the clown pill that is a national libertarian party at the same time as I did. And we both started beating the anarchist handbook recently with that coordinating was a nice white pill. Isn't that great that you guys can have this bond? Isn't that, that this to me is what anarchism is also about when you make voluntary relationships and they're strong and you create little communities voluntarily. Those are like the best. Um, I wonder if, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Auk I don't know what that first word is. I love Oz and hate CCP, but I see it for what it is. Oh yeah, it's not a conspiracy if they're all talking about it openly. If we balkanize, the new red country loses ground resources and we'd still be looking down the barrel of communist China in addition to a new communist neighbor country. Worse, no, no, absolutely not. Uh, China, it, I don't think that's the case at all. Um, and I don't know how it'd be split up, but I also don't think it'd be as simple as red and blue. There's, you know, there's no way you're not getting some blue pockets and red pockets. Thanks for right to my feelings line. Problem is family is very blue pill. They said we have all gathered this summer if it wasn't for being vaccinated. Too bad. Stick to your guns and get old enough to be independent of them and not dependent on their, don't let them guilt you into doing something you don't believe in. It's tough. I'm not saying it's not tough. Seriously, dude, I know it's hard. Consent is the litmus test by which all morality is measured. God, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it sounds like you're saying if everyone consents, that means it's moral. It also, so that I disagree with completely. If, on the other hand, if you're saying if something is not consensual, it's not moral, I also disagree because sometimes things are consensual that are also immoral. So I, I don't think consent is a litmus test. Test means degrees and consent is pretty binary. I'm between black and white pilled. Eventually the good will win. That's white pilled. Yes, there's no question there's gonna be a lot of pain and damage on the way. That is absolutely, that is the definition of the white pill. So you're not black pilled. I got a job as high school science teacher, live in blue state. Ironically, I don't like the education system. Any advice? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, don't I don't know your story. I don't, I, but I mean, if it sounds like this is just advice for anyone. If you're unhappy with your job, find another, take the steps to make another career palatable or, or, or actionable. Do you have a PO box yet? No, I'm getting one next week. <laughs> this is great. Okay, I got seven more minutes, then I got to go do um, um, close grip bench. For what it's worth, the way I explain things, similar to the way you describe public philosophy is life is simple, a rationalization is complex. Uh, Harvey Picar, my mentor said, ordinary life is pretty complex stuff. And I think that's a good line that makes more sense the older I get. Advice, oh, you are such a baby. Look at that picture. You, oh my God. First of all, get a haircut. You look like a girl. Okay, that's number one, it's pathetic. You're a girl, you wanna be a girl? Advice for young anarchists on a, a liberal campus. Um, you need to understand that these people aren't as excited about ideas as you are. And they will resent you for introducing, their entire goal is to avoid thinking about ideas. So you are gonna innocently think, oh, I could talk to this person, have a conversation, save it for the internet and talking to people who are like-minded and observe. You're there to learn not to run your mouth because you're a moron like everyone your age, including myself, was a moron at that age. I mentioned that in the white pill, how when you're 18, Peter Fector was 18 when he was killed. Um, everyone at that age is a moron and has their entire life ahead of them. So I know it's hard to be patient at that age, but just keep it quiet. 
Last move before the cheer, what are you grubbing on? Oh, that's easy. Pink bubblegum ice cream. Uh, did you hear about to <laughs> I heard about it five minutes ago. <laughs> Man, I'm really slow with these chats. Okay, first world problems. Um, um, hold on a second. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. I don't want to miss any of these. Glad I found you this year. Oh God, Hudson Valley. Yeah. What a beautiful place that's been destroyed. I would spend some time there. Sorry for Q stuff. I'll get your back. <laughs> Here you go. All the links again. Q and and Q post online. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> would you have Roger Ver and your welcome talk about crypto? Um, that's not a bad idea at all. Roger and I have DM'd with each other. China isn't real. It's a boogeyman made by the cathedral to scare away the idea of vulcanization. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's like, why haven't we invaded Canada? Why haven't we invaded Mexico? Um, it's not at all a given that we're going to, the bigger country's going to be. Now, their sphere of influence is certainly they're going to try to, uh, but it, I think you're going to have, if we're split into two countries or more, certainly a big part of them is going to be China phobic. Would you vote for a Texit referendum or abstain out of principle? I don't know. Uh, I, I would probably abstain not out of principle, out of laziness. How many years will it be for statistically impossible to, for Republicans to win? This is your enemy telling you Trump and Reagan were both impossible to win. And Reagan won, what, 49 states in the second time? It's a complete lie. Uh, it's not a, it's, that's, this is one of the stupidest things, not stupidest things, but one of the most defeatist things the alt right pushes that demog demographics is destiny. When America was far more white, you had, and I talk about this in your right, you had Woodrow Wilson. You, when the Republican was Eisenhower with like 90% tax rates, it, it, like go back and look at how bad it used to be. So it doesn't port at all the way people think. And, and by the way, if the Republicans didn't win all these elections, we'd still be screwed. All this stuff happened under Trump's watch also. And when he had a Republican Congress, there wasn't even a pre pretense of cutting a dime of Obama's budget. They didn't even think, they didn't even pretend Would you mind sharing some of your spiritual beliefs and practices? I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but I do mind because I think it's something that's pretty personal and I will talk about it in a future book, which I can't get into. I'm not trying to be evasive, but it's, it's a complicated, long subject. I think it deserves a lot of uh, uh, time. Friend wants me to vax partly because her relative died of COVID. She had no idea about vax spike blood distribution or tox findings. Said even the vax caused symptoms, she would feel the same. I don't think taking the vax is, is some huge obscenity. And I could see this being an example of where you'd be like, you know what, your relative died, I'll do this for you. And that could bring you guys closer. I can see that be, she, if she's being nice to you and it depends how she's coming at it. If she's being nice to you, I don't think it's a big deal. I learned a few days ago that people are turning CBT into THC. I did not know that. Okay, I'm bouncing in five minutes. Um, Welcome to Texas. Please run against Master Beto. Oh, I don't know. I think that's going to happen. Globalists picked a cold, tracked it, hyped, and stopped the world. Colds have led to pneumonia, right? But until Corona, no one freaked out. They're clearly exploiting this for their personal purposes. And also, it's, it's bad because it's showing that they don't have the power that they claim they do to control all the problems. Thank you, Charlie. Um, if you die from COVID, then the COVID also dies at the exact same time. So to me, that's a draw. I don't think that's how it works. Okay, I'm just going to take three more. Start reading your book. Would love to be an anarchist, but as an airline pilot, I couldn't imagine not having a governing body over the airways. Why would the governing body have to be the state? Uh, that, that doesn't. There's no reason that has to be the case at all. Um, it just has to be some kind of look at the um, the movie industry. They have the MPAA, which is a it's a centralized thing that controls movies and what's allowed in them. That's a, another counterexample. Um, you're moving to the free state of <laughs> um, Yaron Brook doesn't want ARI to ally with other liberty groups. Aren't some liberty movement using staying above it all to stay at the left's crosshairs? No, he's being true to Ayn Rand's vision. Objectivism is not the same as just liberty in some broad sense. 
I totally get where he's coming from. He's saying Ayn Rand's message is special and unique and would be diluted as being just some broad liber liberty group that when he sees people like Paul Ryan saying, I love Ayn Rand, he just shakes his head. So I think he makes complete sense. And when you have something that's special and unique, you don't want to kind of dilute it. I, I totally get that. Don't be mad at me, Michael. I try my best. Well, that's not good enough. Why is, do you think such, some people are better than others such an effective filter for left versus right? Because this illustrates the left leftist cognitive dissonance because on the one hand, they value equality. At the same time, equality is something that is not either possible, desirable, or even coherent. So when they have these two contradictory ideas in their head, they start trying to reconcile them and they can't help but give a speech. Whereas on the right, it's like, yeah, there's two ways of looking at it. Someone who's a badass is clearly better than a loser. And also the person you're talking to is clearly better than someone who beats their kids. It, it, those are two ways someone's better than others. It's just, there's no question about it. So I guess I just outed myself. My son is addicted to video games. How do I convince him life is the greatest video game of all? That's not a video game, it's a board game, you dumbass. Okay. Hope you're settling well. I hope this, can you, I started this thing. I'm the one who reintroduced it to the zeitgeist and now it's fucking picking up steam. You've got Sarah Silverman, you've got the Daily Wire. You've got every, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, one more. And then what are your thoughts on the generational theory? I think it's, I, I, I'm not familiar with that one specifically, but all that stuff reads to me like astrology. And it, it's, it, it does not, I don't find them cogent whatsoever. Okay, last one from Brent. Um, New Hampshire state rep just called for secession. How far out do you think we are from national divorce? We're, it's much, here's the thing. If I told you in 2014, which is not that long ago, which is more likely, Donald Trump becomes president or Texas tries to secede, I would bet 99% of us would have said Texas. It, it wouldn't even be much of a thought. It's like, okay. Clearly they're both never gonna happen, but it's you can easily imagine the Texas legislature voting to secede. Here we are. Okay guys, I will talk to you soon. Um, your welcome next week is going to be either Dave, if he returns my calls, or Yaron Brook. Um, I am glad uh, that I could still bring some joy to some people's lives. It's only going to get better. Audiobook is getting mastered. Uh, White Pill is two thirds of the way done. I have, do not have a release date. Um, and the deluxe hardcovers will be at malice.locals.com only in, I think those will be like in three months though. It takes, that's how long it takes them to print them, but they're going to be really, really fancy and nice. And, um, I'm glad that there's so many of you. So this is really, really nice. And, and by the way, I've been, I've been recognized every single day that I've been in Austin. Everyone has been super cool. So that have been very kind of everyone and really appreciated. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great. So I'll see you on the internet and have a good one.